Good evening, everyone. We are about to have our final segment of our Health Focus Weekend, which started, of course, yesterday with our Visitors Day and a Sabbath service, and which continued in the afternoon with panel discussion and today with health checks, counseling, and you had many talks in between. So you've had a lot of uh, information already. And in this final talk, you're going to divide it into two parts, two comprehensive parts. I will deal with the major physical health problems of the chronic non-communicable diseases. Again, briefly outlining the important things you need to remember. And uh, Elder Saul Leacock will be dealing with uh, issues of emotional intelligence, uh, stress, the issues that people have been more aware of recently with the suicides and so on. Of course, uh, we had talks throughout the day and uh, Dr. Kadisha Douglas just gave a very good talk here also on mental health as well. So you've had a lot of information and I hope that this information we will all put to good use. So this is our final segment and I will start by just mentioning that here in Barbados, we are very concerned and not only Barbados, but the Caribbean with premature death that is sudden and also premature death from the chronic non-communicable diseases. The hypertension prevalence, the diabetes prevalence, uh, the problem with coronary artery, all of our health authorities and our health professional practitioners. And we are seeing relatively young people, 40s, 50s, and 60s, uh, coming down with these diseases and even dying prematurely. Uh, the, the breast cancer problem is particularly frightening in our relatively young women. Colon cancer affecting both genders is of concern. And relatively younger men discovering prostate cancer at an advanced stage, this is also a concern to all our health authorities. I'm going to therefore stress before I get into prevention, so our consciences were quelled that we were not doing other than right. So when you find, when you move through various tracks, you move away from traffic, you move through the fruit trees, and as you heard uh, Dr. Gadisha mentioning, uh, uh, you also get, we come out at 5.30 or group, or 5.15, and then we get the sunlight. So you need the, the morning fresh air tracks uh, so that you're away from traffic, you see fruit trees, and you get sunlight. Exercise is very important. You should do it uh, five, six days a week, okay? Five, six days a week. I like to exercise six days a week and do a nature walk on Sabbath. Uh, now, I've been, I've been stressing exercise for a long time, but I have, I have some friends I can't get move at all. <laughs> Don't move. And they always have some valid excuse why they can't exercise. So I'll continue to pray for them and encourage them. I'm not calling any names. Okay. Now, uh, nutrition, we stress the importance of fruits and vegetables, green leafy vegetables. I did a talk on microcirculation earlier. As we get older, the tiny blood vessels in the brain, the tiny blood vessels, capillaries, arterials and capillaries in, in various parts of the body, feet, for example, and brain, we, we are now discovering something called neurovascular ischemia. That is blood vessels in the brain, the tiny blood vessels closing down and therefore parts of the brain not getting adequate blood supply and it can lead to dementia. It is not just an Alzheimer's situation, it is a neurovascular ischemic situation leading to dementia. So you need to keep those uh, capillaries open and we mentioned the vegetables, the fruits, the exercise, avoid tobacco, avoid alcohol and then we mentioned these things, uh, leafy vegetables and especially root vegetables, the best root vegetable for opening up the arteries and the capillaries would be beets. 
big group, big group powder. They enhance the production of nitric oxide in the blood vessels, beet root, okay? Then in terms of the berries, all the berries are good, but blueberries are fantastic for the blood vessels and the brain. And then uh, organic raw cacao or cocoa, uh, cacao, I thank you, uh, the, the young English student corrected me. Uh, which is very powerful. It contains powerful bioflavonoids for opening up the capillaries. Then uh, garlic prepared in a right way, sliced, rested, put in water, and then strained off. And you can dilute that water because garlic may be fairly harsh for some people. And drink small portions uh, frequently if you have a circulation problem. Cayenne pepper also is good for the microcirculation. Some people can't tolerate it like Brother Steve. Uh, somebody asked if his, if his stomach is made of all iron because he was drinking it without a wink. But you can get it in capsule form and take it with a meal where it is less irritant going down, but it still gets into the capillaries and does a good uh, vasodilation uh, performance for the arteries. Uh, but one of the best ways to keep the circulation healthy and the microcirculation healthy is daily exercise. You can't beat exercise. And leaving out the saturated fats, the animal fats, the high cholesterol foods, and getting your protein, more of your protein from lentils and beans and so on. Remember to, uh, remember to, to pay attention to adequate sleep at night. You would have heard that mentioned both by Elder Lika, uh, Dr. Kadisha, uh, and others, adequate rest, seven hours sleep at night, and you want uh, adequate darkness for your melatonin and so on in the circadian cycle to work. Adequate sleep, adequate exercise, good nutrition, your fruits and vegetables, move away from excessive animal fat, clear out the sugar, be moderate with your salt. You must use salt, but not excessive. And the thing about hotel food or restaurant food, pardon me, and sometimes people get vexed when I say this, is that you don't really know what is in what you're eating. Salt, trans fat, too much sugar, and uh, well, you know when celebration days come around, and my family want to take me somewhere, so no, let me get up early and cook. I know why cook, and we can go under a tree, a beach anywhere, and I know why eating. Much cheaper, much healthier. Uh, anyhow, uh, you know what they tell me? That is only one day. But uh, be careful with commercial foods. The government, you would have heard the Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Mayor Amor Motley, announce that by the end of 2024, all imports of trans fats will be banned in Barbados. So the bakers will have to look for proper shortening, proper oils to put in the bread because most of the shortenings used still contain trans fat. There, there's one company, for example, Roberts Manufacturing Company, which is very good. They have moved away from trans fats for a couple of years now after a talk we gave uh, at... Uh, the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center about five years ago there. I think uh, Robert's Manufacturing lead the way in healthy margarines without trans fats, and I congratulate them, that's very good. But still many bakers use trans fats and the government is banning trans fats by 2024, uh, the end of 2024. When you read a label, you see partially hydrogenated oil, that is a trans fat, it's not good for your health. So we have too much uh, of these chronic diseases, too many of them, and we need to uh, beat it. And the healthy diet, the exercise, adequate sleep, avoiding tobacco, avoiding alcohol, young people eating more fruits and vegetables. And this is the thing about young people. Young people have now come along in an environment with French fries, the fast food outlets, macaroni pie, and they don't want to eat good old sweet potato, yam, breadfruit, uh, and so on. And we have a struggle. Uh, a lot of young people don't even eat, fru even eat fruits and vegetables. We have to lovingly encourage them 
to eat healthy because they can get away with murder when they're young. But as they continue going up to teenage, we are seeing too many of the chronic diseases. We are seeing people in their 20s and 30s with blood pressures and, sh and sugars and so on that are not right uh, at that age. Uh, and back in the day when I was going to school, we, uh, well, uh, we used to run off everything we eat, we ate, and we didn't have a lot to eat. And I remember when we get into school, but when we go back into the classroom after the lunch break, and the emphasis wasn't that we had spent a lot of time eating. We spent a lot of time running about in the lunch break. So when we came back into the class, our shirts were soaked. And I remember one teacher telling me, but Douglas, how your shirt gets so wet? You're all doing too much running about in the lunch break. But that we didn't realize that was healthy. And we were all thin. I remember getting the school bus and the chap said, Douglas, don't turn on the side. If not, we can't see you. That was back then. But as the years have passed, Things have changed, and we need to encourage our young people to get back to more fruits, vegetables, and ground provisions, and don't worry so much of these. You see, just eating for taste and not for health is what occupies them, and we have to lovingly encourage them to alter that. So remember those basic principles. And nowadays, of course, especially since COVID, with the tremendous, uh, you hear the various psychiatrists talking and uh, about it, uh, the stress, the anxiety, the depression, uh, mental health and emotional health, all now very, very important, uh, as important as physical health. Because if a man isn't going to die of a heart attack, but he's going to commit suicide, he's still dead. So uh, I'm now therefore going to turn over to our educational psychologist, our counselor, uh, Elder Saul Leacock. Uh, you would have heard Dr. Kadisha earlier on, and yesterday you heard some inputs there to give this final segment on emotional health and mental health as we tap all together to give you an overall package of good spiritual, mental and physical health uh, as we go forward in these trying times at this stage in the world where everything is upside down. Elderly Cup. Good evening, everyone. Now the area of emotional intelligence and social intelligence is a relatively new area of study. Most people know about academic intelligence, which is IQ, but most people do not know about EQ or EI, emotional intelligence. And um, quite a number of people are not emotionally intelligent, and you'll understand why I say that in a moment. It is said that IQ can get you hired for a job, but EQ causes you to get the promotion. Because people who have high EQ skills get along better with people, have better human relations, that is. They can solve problems better, and they know how to understand and relate to people with varying emotions. And that is why they get the promotion. They can get along better with people who are difficult to get along with. And that is important. Emotional intelligence, uh, and it follows with emotional health. Very important. So knowing our emotions is critical. It is said that life is 10% 10 what happens to us and 90% of how we react to it. I repeat, life is 10% what happens to us and 90% of how we react to, react to it. And those are the words of Chuck Swindoll, a preacher, as it were. Now, People with high EQ skills, as I said just now, have good human relations skill, good problem solving skill, and they connect well with other people. It is said that if they are correcting somebody, people with high EQ connect before they correct. Most people like to correct people without a connection. But the first thing you must do if you're gonna correct someone is to have a good connection with them. It makes more acceptable what they are telling you to do that is right or correcting, as it were. So what is EQ or EI, emotional intelligence? The ability to recognize your own emotions as well as the emotions of others. Do you know how powerful your emotions are? The emotions that we experience are so powerful 
that I can tell you, uh, well, people, people who are young and were attracted to someone and really fell in love with that person couldn't keep from seeing them no matter the distance, that attraction. And once they get that stimulated, it is difficult to stop it. It's like getting on an airplane heading for London and says, stop, I want to get off. That's not possible because the emotions are already worked up. And um, there are some people who, oh, you know, work up themselves into an emotion of frenzy and they get upset and angry and then they can't control themselves. I remember doing counseling in prison where one chap told me that I had a number of people in there, even a principal who had strangled a young girl with a tie and put her under his bed. A principal. He died since then, a senior man. But emotional intelligence and that thing called emotions are very very powerful indeed and we have to use this information to guide our thinking as well as our behavior now people who have high emotional intelligence know what you are feeling you know sometimes we say things to people and we don't know how they are feeling about it you have a person who came to church one time to a particular church and somebody tell, told them that they look like a young elephant. <laughs> and that person from then on was discouraged from coming to church. And you've seen the, 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 the WhatsApp video, I'm sure, of a man that went to church and his cell phone rang by mistake. The pastor scolded him. His wife came down on him. The members started to speak to him. And... He left there depressed and went to a rum shop. And while at the rum shop, nervous still, he missed and broke a glass. And the host came and said, that's no problem, all of us make mistakes. And then one of the other fellows said, let me help clean up here. And the, the owner gave him a complimentary drink. The man never stopped going back to the bar after that. He was more comfortable and welcome and treated better at the bar than at church. The people at the bar seem to have understood his situation. But sometimes we come down very hard on people. We don't have a knowledge of the emotions that the person is experiencing, where they might have come from, what they might have happened to them. If they have lost a loved one, nothing like that. But we just make our comment without consideration of the other person's emotional feelings. And uh, those emotions, know what your emotions mean and how it affects other people as well. Now, here are some signs of people with high IQ or EQ. They handle criticism without denial, without blaming others, and without making excuses. They are open-minded. That's a very important trait, very open-minded. Some people are very close-minded and withdrawn and introverted. Introversion is not a good, healthy social experience. And those who are shy and timid, well, you know me, I'm very shy. That's a social disease. Then also, people with high EQ are good listeners. Very good listeners. They understand where people are coming from and more look at their meaning than what the words are saying. They look beyond the words to understand the meaning. And they also do not sugarcoat or compromise the truth. High people with high EQ. And they apologize when they're wrong. They have no problem with apologizing when they're wrong. I am sorry. And so on. So if you have a low EQ, a low degree of EQ, you have no self-awareness, you have no empathy, that is, you don't see things from other people's point of view. You are oblivious to your own emotion and the emotions of others. So you end up lashing out, being reactionary. You find others are to blame for most of the issues on his or her team. Those are people who have a low EQ. You see, within the human brain, there's a part we call the rational brain, and there's another part known as the limbic system. The limb, I don't have a um, slides here. I thought you were gonna do it inside, but, but I have a diagram here of the human brain. The limbic system is responsible for external stimuli and how we react to situations that occur. 
It is the edge, the emotional part of the brain. And the emotional part of the brain is directly has a connection with the rational brain. So emotional intelligence is a balance between the rational brain and the emotional brain. Often for people who don't have a high EQ, they often react to something that is terrifying. And that triggers a release of adrenaline. The heart rate rises, increases. They become sweaty and the muscles are tense. And you know that, you know that sugar itself can trigger quite a number of those things as well. Because an experiment was carried out some time ago with, with spiders. Some were fed sugar, others were not. And the one that were not fed sugar weaved a beautiful symmetrical web. And the others that were fed some sugar had all kinds of da patterns, as it were. So it's important to understand how these things, as simple as they are, affect. Now, we call what we just mentioned, the reaction, uh, the fight or flight response. And life is made up of these, daily life, that is, as well as death situation. Do you know that an emotional, a person who's emotionally disturbed can see things, can hear things, and can experience things that are not real? Let me give you an example. Um... They call the politician or the one that is the Reverend Affili. Reverend Affili invited me to do a service with him at his church. And I went, he asked me to pray, and then down by the cemetery, he asked me to say a few words. But after the service, I saw a young lady sitting on a tombstone. And I went and I sat next to her. So I asked her simply, What's happening? What are you thinking about? And she looked up. It was wrong at Easter time. And she said, you see that kite up there? That kite is keeping a lot of noise. And I know that my brother is not going to sleep well tonight. You understand that? She was out of touch with the reality. And I've seen people who have been suffering from loss of a loved one, thinking and acting irrationally. Because that itself is one of the trigger stressors sometimes of a mental depression or a psychotic episode. That is a chemical imbalance in the nervous system. So even challenges, when you have a computer and the system crashes, that can cause problems. Disappointments, someone misrepresents you, or re employee that is enraged or co-worker for that matter. Or road rage. Have you ever had experience of people in a road rage? Some people end up killing others. One man at least used a technique. He was very angry that the other man behind him was, that the man in behind was angry that the man in front was moving slowly. So he got out and took out a cutlass from the, the car. And as he was going towards the car, the man came out with a gun and held it like that. And he, then he pretended with the stick that he had to be handicapped <laughs> and walked away. He was able to defuse a lot of what would have happened to him. So road rage, people have been killed by that. Difficult clients or people. There are some people that are hard to get along with. Even God has difficulty getting along with some people. You know what you said? Furthermore, us as human beings. And that's not on any defect on God's part. It's just that the people are not responding to his spirit and overtures. So you have to know how to react to people and to respond to them emotionally, that they are happy and satisfied and comfortable. And we have to be able to draw out people's emotions rather than agitate them. Very important. So being in tune with your own emotional intelligence is essential to your success. Now, who's more likely to succeed? A leader who screams at his team or a leader who stays in control and calmly assesses the situation? And that's a big difference. The whole two theories are bound up in there. A theory X, manager theory, and as well as a theory Y, manager. I wouldn't get into that now, but there's a lot involved in that. All right? So... Emotional intelligence and emotional development and emotional health are all about how people feel emotionally, be able to get, perform better 
than the, and those who are high in EQ perform better than those who are policed, as it were. All right, I'm just skipping a few things here to get to the main point and then wrap up. All right, so being in tune with emotional intelligence is critically important. I was going down all the time. All right. So self-awareness is one of the attributes of emotional intelligence. The ability to recognize and understand your moods, your emotions, and your drives, as well as their effect upon others. Self-confidence is one of the characteristics of those who have high emotional intelligence. Too many people are shy and timid, and therefore it cripples their effort and success in any line. Those who have high emotional intelligence have a high sense of humor about their own shortcomings as well. Very important. All right, skipping to get to the main point. So the ability to make up to understand the emotional makeup of other people is known as empathy. Being able to empathize, that is to be able to see things from other people's point of view. The ability to treat people according to their emotional reactions. Very important. Um, touch it the wrong one again. All right. All right, now we, we, we know something called the Einstein principle, and that is where we need a paradigm shift. If you keep on doing things the same way that you're accustomed to doing them, what will happen? You will continue to get the same response that you're accustomed to getting. If you want to achieve different results, then you have to do things differently. One grandmother had a secret. It is said that the mother was trying to feed her child some bad tasting medication. And y'all know what bad tasting medication, those of our age, it was Sena, castor oil, Epsom salt, and Brooklaps. Y'all remember those? Hey, remember those? When you use those, nobody had to tell you to go into the bathroom. <laughs> it works from within out. So try a different method. The grandmother tried a different method. The mother was getting frustrated, giving the child medication. The child would twist its mouth, spit out, whatever, knock away the spoon, and the mother was be the child that is the mother was becoming more and more frustrated. The grandmother looking on saw the situation and said, Leave him to me, I'll give him the medication. The grandmother went into another room, and from the outside, the mother could hear a lot of laughter and fun going on on the inside. And the, grand, the, the mother looked, peeped through the keyhole to see that the grandmother had chosen a different method. The grandmother had put the bad tasting medication in a toy gun and was spouting it into the child's mouth. And the child was receiving it gladly. <laughs> we need to try a different method in order to get results that are different. Emotional intelligence is more than just emotion. It has to do with your personality, your character, your reputation, your impression, your relationships, your friendships, your health and mental sanity, your happiness, your satisfaction, and your peace of mind. All of those count with good emotional intelligence and development and health as well. It affects every decision that we make, and it even affects our relationship. If you're in a relationship where you have a wife or a husband that is cranky, miserable, nagging, fretful, May the Lord have mercy on your soul. Because the, the, the wise man, Solomon, says, better to live in the corner of the rooftop than in a house with a nagging wife or husband. So that's, that's important. And a lot of people do not know how to relate to their spouses. And they come out of the situation bitter rather than better. You know, if I didn't see it, I would not have believed it. A couple of years ago, I was reading a Reader's Digest, and I saw some photos of people who were married for 40 years. And the photos were also of them before they are married. And then I learned a very important lesson from that. The Bible mentioned it, that by beholding, you become change. They were living together for so long that they started to laugh like each other. 
they started to look like each other and they started to relate to each other accordingly. So be very careful who you marry because it will definitely affect your future life. All right. So people who have your emotional intelligence, it means better performer, better pay, and overall success in general. So if you want to see um, good results, you need for a paradigm shift in your relationship, especially with people you deal with daily. So coming down to a close. You know that when people get married, they bring all of their dysfunctional characteristics into their marriage. And the primary socialization unit for these dysfunctions is the family. It is in the family as well as our childhood upbringing that we learn how to be argumentative. We learn how to quarrel. We learn how to fret, how to fight, how to shout, how to ignore, how to give people the silent treatment, how to get mad, annoyed, frustrated, how to retaliate, how to keep scores, how to be defensive and offensive, how to overreact, how to criticize, how to find fault. All of these things we learn even in our relationship growing up. Treating people evenly, demanding good behavior to treat other people well. That's another one, all right? So in every situation, the Bible says we must learn to give thanks. What does the Bible also say? A merry heart doeth good like a, a medicine. What does that mean? When you have a merry heart, it stimulates the bone marrow to produce more blood white cells which help to fight off infection and disease. Now it's important to understand the Bible says, but a broken spirit drive up the bone, depression. But there are four main um, chemicals, or what we call feel brain chemicals, feel good chemicals or hormones. Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins. And you can boost your levels of these hormones with some basic lifestyle changes. I have, well, you've heard them already. Diet is one of them. Exercise, another. Meditation. Humor. You know what that means? Research for yourself the benefits of laughter, and you will see what I mean. And here's another one. Sexual activity. Now we are talking within the marriage context, all right? Sexual activity. And one research shows that couples, especially the females and um, who satisfy their male counterpart can help him um, control and also enhance his prostate. And out, out of the situation, all two come out feeling a lot calmer, feeling a lot more loved and accepted and wanted and appreciated. That is all involved as well. And then it's practicing gratitude, being thankful, and so on. So there's a lot involved in emotional intelligence. Emotional memories, you will know, last longer than just academic memory. And that is why when people want to get back to you, they would remember something you said, where you said it, how you said it, how you were standing when you said it, and what you meant by it. All of those memories were emotional memories, and they last longer. You try to remember something, but let something happen, and you will remember it better. Very important. And that is why God gave us the limbic system, the emotional part of the brain, so that if it is developed, we become more sociable, more connecting with people, and more loving, more forgiving, and all of those contribute to health and happiness. So I want to leave that with you this evening. And I trust that you will not just concentrate on your physical health, but on your emotional, your psychological, and your mental health as well. May God bless you. Thank you. Let us pray. Our gracious God and Father, we thank you for a full day yesterday and today. We thank you for all your protection and your traveling mercies from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for all that we have heard. We pray that we may narrow the gap between what we have heard and what we do or practice. Enable all of us to understand that you are concerned about our health 
as you are concerned about our social and emotional and mental development. Guide and direct each individual here present. May we make a commitment to Jesus, surrender all to him, and focus on not just living longer, but living forever. Guide and direct us through this night. Grant us your traveling mercies and your protection. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 All right, I said a key is missing. Could you want to claim it? It has a black. Um, I can't read it. <laughs>